Let's do it. All right. All right. Good evening. I'm sorry for my sorry for my tardiness. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the Westwood Westwood Planning Board meeting. My name is Trevor Lobinstein, and I'll be chairing this meeting. All meetings are recorded by Westcat. Is there anyone else who would like to record the meeting? And if so, could you please identify yourself? Seeing none, as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones. The agenda is available at the back of the room. The meeting will follow the order on the agenda. The meeting will be civil and all people will be treated respectfully. The format of the meeting will be when an item is called, the applicant will come forward to the podium to present their application to the board. The board will proceed to staff comments. The board members will ask questions of the applicant and then the public will be given an opportunity to comment. When it's time for the public comment period, the chairman will call those wishing to speak to the podium. And once at the podium, please identify yourself by stating your name and address for the record. All comments and questions shall be directed to the chair. All people will be given the opportunity to speak, but in the interest of time and fairness, repetitive or off-topic comments may be cut short. First, are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes. All right, the agenda stands. So with that, I will move to the first item. So item one, it's the University Station phase two, development area B. This is an enabling package for the project development review. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, Paul, am I on? Uh, Paul Sincotta with New England Development, here to review um, uh, the, the design drawings for the what is primarily the park or the enabling package, the, the primary piece of it being the park that was approved by the board uh, just about a year ago. Um, what I thought we would do. Is that on? I'm going to. Um, oh, we can turn the volume. I'd like to be able to talk off of the board um, where, the, where the laser pointer doesn't work as effectively. So. Um, Abby, maybe if we zoomed out just for a second, just to get the overall um, the overall um, view of the park. Or <coughs> so to orient yourselves, the drawings are as you tend to see the drawings in University Station. Yeah. North is to the right on the plan. The park runs essentially in a northwest direction. So the park is located here. The scope for, as a reminder of what the board approved uh, back in uh, this time last year, was an enabling package that included the park and elements of the main entrance drive that was serving the Brigham um, site, the hotel site, and then the park, which ultimately abuts and accesses the um, what is, is now known as um, Westwood Place, um, the Pulte condominium project. So if we go back, um, and, and before we leave this picture, the, <coughs> the layout of this, of the park, um, is, is essentially the same as the, um, the layout that the plan approved a year or so ago with one exception, and, and that is as a result of the Pulte um, review, this segment of sidewalk was bellied a little bit closer to the Pulte building to satisfy some fire access. So everything north of the Pulte building's layout of the park is identical to what was approved by the board um, back in May of 17. And the idea was there was a conceptual design that we had presented to the board. That design um, needed to be refined into a final design, and, and that's the package that was presented um, to the board and to, to the beta review team about a month or so ago. And, and that's what um, is the subject of, of tonight's review. So if we, <coughs> if we zoom in um, to our color rendered plan, I, I thought I would start from the southern end and just walk up uh, from the southern end to the northern end give you a quick overview with me tonight. Nate Chio from Tetratech, who's our site civil engineer. You all recognize his face, and John Guads from Shadley. Shadley did the um, landscape design on the project. Um, they're here to answer any, any questions um, that I may not be able to answer. So the southern end makes a connection with Bridges Drive. There are retaining walls at the entry. The width of the, of the walkway, as you might recall, is a, is a 10 foot paved walkway with reinforced, four foot reinforced shoulders on either side from Bridges Drive to 
to the Pulte access um, into the Pulte surface <coughs> lot. This is um, the, the um, Pulte building along this edge. Um, the plant materials closest to Pulte are, are intentionally left lower to not obstruct access. The taller plant materials are on the northern and southern end of that building. The typical treatment within the park um, is that the large landscape masses are, mo are, are mounded to be able to provide privacy when you're within the park and, and buffer from the adjacent um, parking areas. <coughs> there's, there's a pedestrian connection from the park to the sidewalk that travels on the Pulte side of Bridges Drive. Um, there'd be a future connection um, on heading towards University Ave when that um, commercial piece is developed. We're providing the crosswalks across Bridges Drive and connecting with the sidewalk system that's in front of Bridges Drive. One of the, one of the beta review comments is there's, there's a little bit of a misalignment with this particular crosswalk. This gets shifted just a little bit um, a little bit towards university to align with an existing ramp on the other side of Bridges Drive. And then as you recall, um, the, the sidewalk that travels across the Pulte side of Bridges Drive also uh, at the bottom end has crosswalks that connect um, onto the Bridges <coughs> property um, along uh, uh, up tight to the railroad boundary. As we, as we move north, um, there are two big open elements within the park. The first, the first open element is is a is a lawn area. So, so this is a large lawn area, and then immediately north of that is is the plaza area. Those are similar, or those are the the same as the the design that that was approved um, about a year ago. The connection into the Pulte surface parking lot matches that which is part of the Pulte approval. Um, and again, <coughs> it's the reinforced shoulders and, and the 10-foot sidewalk so that it provides a fire access should, should the fire department feel as though they need to access through the park and then into the, into the surface parking lot here. Um, you may recall the, the park is constructed in, in two phases, phase A, phase B, phase A is about 80% of the park that is completed prior to the Brigham openings, which will be in, in late September, early October of this year. The phase B segment, um, again, another one of the comments in the beta review was to show that phase line. It's, it's, this, it's this heavy dash line here. Phase B is from that line to the Pulte boundary. It's that small area that was left over, you may recall, we spent a fair amount of time talking about that in the, in the uh, Pulte approvals. <coughs> so that phase B will be completed prior to um, the occupancy of that building that abuts it. The plaza, the, the, lawn, the lawn area is, is bordered with some large shade trees. Uh, but the idea is that it's a, it's an open lawn um, area that can be the used for function space or just simply um, passive recreation. the The plaza area will be will be treated in a pavement that is very very similar to that pavement treatment between Target and Wegmans. It's a, it's a stamped concrete, a stamped colored concrete. Uh, it is bordered with seating walls. Um, all of these shapes. Our seating walls, large shade tree in the middle of this one, large shade tree in the middle of that one, with seating walls here that provide seating on all of the edges that give you the north, south, easterly facing kind of exposure. Um, and the idea of, of not having a formal um, shade structure was that it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit more naturalistic. It provides the opportunity to be able to put tables and chairs and umbrellas and, and have it meet different needs and and, and, and at the same time have shade provided by the shade trees um, that, that border it. Uh, furnishings within the park, they're, they're all the same that was approved. Um, bicycle racks, benches, trash receptacles, um, all of these furnishings match those that are um, in, in the, uh, that come from the 
the, uh, the development across the way on the other side of University Ave. Lighting standards, um, we, sh we show lights scattered throughout. The light, the light pole that's used in this park is the same light pole that's used in the Gateway Park that's also used in the Meadow Park. Uh, Meadow Park is the one behind the Dedham Westwood Water District building. Uh, the connection to the Brigham and Women's parcel, you recall the, that 45 degree angle walk that crosses the entry into what would be the, in phase one, it's Brigham's surface parking lot. In phase two, it's Brigham's parking garage, which is right here. So that's the pedestrian connection from their property into the park. Uh, mounded areas here, again, that buffer between um, the main entrance drive to the Brigham facility, um, mounded areas that that buffer to <coughs> the parking area to the to the west, um, which would be the future commercial space, and again accommodations for a future walk. You may recall on the master plan, this walkway splits the two commercial buildings that are shown up on University Ave, and then when we reach. The northern end of the park, Brigham's Way, again, <clears throat> the sidewalk connections within the park meet the sidewalk uh, that is on the park side of, of Brigham Way, crosswalk to the sidewalk that exists on the northern side of Brigham Way. Um, this crosswalk comes back down and crosses you over to, to get you onto uh, the Brigham Corner there. Other elements of the enabling package which which go beyond this rendering here um, you see a little hint of it um, starting up here there's about a half a dozen street trees and, and a grass strip that are planted from the park edge heading heading um, up on the drawing to meet University Ave there's a landscape um, island between the restaurant parking area and the access drive that takes you to the hotel. That's technically also part of the enabling package. So you, when you see the match lines within the drawing set, you'll see that this planting here, we pick up the trees, another match line. Some of the other comments um, that came out of Beta's review that we can talk about at this end of the picture, this, this particular corner of what is um, a future parking area we utilized this corner, it, it, it's sort of on the, it's, it's most definitely on the edge of the park and, and really even outside of the park proper to locate some control equipment. We have, there's a transformer that'll go in this, in this, in this area that serves for the lighting within the park. There's an irrigation control cabinet that's within that um, area and there's also a lighting control cabinet. So in the materials that were submitted in response to some of the beta comments, we provided a sketch that shows how that equipment is located in this rectangular area. And, and while on this presentation plan, um, it, it doesn't show quite the level of detail, but that equipment is screened from the park side. I believe, I believe I've touched on a lot of the big comments, but in your packages, there's a, there's a summary table which represents the comments that in Beta's review memo were not, were not identified as having been resolved. So there's about a dozen or so comments that were, were open items and, and we repeated those comments in the left-hand column and in the right-hand column provided a response. If I run down the list really quickly, um, the first one talks about a water main uh, and that water main does exist. Um, there's a water main that extends through the park to connect the main in Brigham Way with the main in Bridges Way. Um, we talked about the, f the phase A, phase B, um, aspects of the park and the completion. That was the second comment, the LU1 comment, and, and that's been shown in the drawings. The ramp that we had spoken about that was misaligned, or the, I should say the crosswalk that was misaligned with the ramp across Bridges Drive is this particular one here. That one has to be just shifted a little bit, and we recognized that misalignment. Uh, 
<coughs> the LU8 comment talks about at a very early stage, conceptually, there was the idea of a shade structure in the middle of the open plaza area. And as the design evolved, we, we elected to go with, with something that's just a little bit less formal um, than that. There was a, a specific recommendation, LU14, that a specific tree, um, a, a tree species, the cottonwood, be substituted and, and between John Gwads and Scott at Beta, um, they've come to agree on a tulip tree. Um, there was just a uh, really a, a, an, in, an inconsistency in one of the landscape details where the concrete base was not shown underneath the trash receptacle. Um, that's a typical detail that we've had in, in uh, throughout the development, and so that detail was clarified. LU20 is really a repeat of LU3 in terms of the location of that crosswalk. <coughs> um, there's a large, uh, so uh, the comment um, LU21, there's a large subsurface drainage uh, infiltration field as we have in many locations scra scattered throughout the development located um, in the middle of in the middle of the park and in the comment regarding yellow 14 was is there adequate plant material or uh, so planting soil over the top of that subsurface infiltration basin and and we have a, a minimum of four feet when we're when we have uh, plants that so so the four foot of soil will adequately support plant material as well as um, and, and I think there's a couple of light structures that end up falling in that same in that same field. So the forfeit would provide adequate depth for burying foundations for the light poles. There was a recommendation down at this end of the park uh, that that an additional drainage inlet be added, and just to avoid the potential for a puddle down there. So that's been added. Um, and we've checked things. There's some consistency. A couple of the remaining comments um, consistency with. PDR approved plans for, for, for the Brigham um, and in some instances with the Pulte plans so that <coughs> this park aligns with the edges of the Brigham design or the Pulte design where walkways meet and, and, and how lighting poles line up and the such. The last few comments, the L1, 2, 3, and 4 relate to lighting. Uh, we provided a photometric plan um, to, to Merrick's team for review, um, and the comment um, was that the light levels were slightly higher on an average um, than some of the other park areas. It was somewhat intentional. We, we think that this park, given its proximity, um, immediate proximity to the, the residential um, and, and the medical office where is fairly occupied buildings and, and in the fall, uh, you know, in winter months it, it, where, where it is dark at four and five o'clock at night, um, having good amount of light here, um, we thought made a lot of sense. And, and their suggestion to make them dimmable is a, is a good one. And so, um, so they will be dimmable. We don't think that they're too bright. Pulte's not an objection to any of the light levels here. Um, and we have, we achieved some real good uniformity and, and Merrick I'm sure can speak um, in more detail to that. And LU, I'm sorry, L3, the comment um, talks of the controller locations, which again is where we identified down in that very northwest corner of the park where all those controls will live. Paul, did you have a diagram of that? Is that additional? Diagram that you're submitting. Did did the diagram itself um, is it part of the response to the beta response? Do you recall? I have. I think I have one with me, and I can show it to you. But I only may have one copy with me. No, for the. Oh. We took the big picture down. Um, so for. Th this has this, so this has the same orientation as the drawing up on the screen. These, this is the corner of the parking lot of the future office building. This, these are the benches that are the benches in that little remote, you know, um, sort of location of the 
of the park. And so there's a transformer, a light control cabinet, and an irrigation control cabinet. And the irrigation control cabinet is flush with the surface? Most of it is, but um, the Dedham Westwood Water District requires that the backflow preventer actually be above grade. So, so there's a portion that's above grade. The light control cabinet is definitely above grade, and the transformer is a traditional transformer. And the idea is we'll have a screen, we'll have a, a, a line of vegetation that screens this equipment from the park side. And then I think our idea for the time being is to, is to um, screen modestly on this side, not knowing exactly what the layout for the, f you know, for the future development happens here. So that was the approach there. Plenty of room on all sides to put in more screening. Right? Correct. Yep. The trans the transform is located closest to the street. That gives Eversource um, the the most ready access to the transformer. The the lighting control cabinet is right, in so the irrigation. The screen will be just across the this area. Right. And right. So th this will be open to the street. Right. The back is that here? Um, you guys can keep it. Do you the park, uh, and uh, I'm not sure that I mentioned the park is fully irrigated, um, yeah, hence the irrigation control cabinet. And, um, okay, are there uh, specific staff comments beyond the? sort of response to the long to the list um, that should be verbalized or Merrick do you feel like you're uh, satisfied uh, no I think um, I think Paul did an excellent summary of, of, of the conversations we had um, just to uh, reiterate a couple of things our comment letter was originated last year um, as part of the initial review of the enabling package um, that, uh, that the the development team has responded to those comments. We did have an opportunity to review a draft of our comments with them via a conference call. So we have discussed these issues. We're not seeing the responses for the first time tonight. And we feel comfortable with the responses that have been provided. And um, Scott Ritter from our office has been reviewing the landscape plan. So if there's any specific questions that the board may have, we're happy to try and answer those in the uh, you know, next stage of the meeting. OK. Thanks very much. Um, I said, I said, well, just one quick question before I, I invite the rest of the board to question or comment. Uh, about how big is that hardscape zone, the, the sort of plaza zone, roughly? Like how long and how wide? Um, it's about 120 feet north to south, and about 60-ish feet uh, the other direction. Or it, 60 at its largest. Sure, yeah. yeah. All right. And typically more like 30, 40. Okay. All right. I guess I'll uh, open it up to the board for questions and comments. Uh, Paul, on the the ramp at the at the end that we were talking about, you were moving. This that's one here. Right. So that's where the fire truck has to go over that, and and how is the fire truck going to fit over the ramp? Is it are the wheels going to be within that ramp area, or will they be will they be hitting a vertical curve at the edges, or have you thought about how that works? The, the the ramp, the ramp is going to slide about six feet or so up on the drawing. So, so what I think it means for the for the fire truck is that that they're they're traveling partially over the over the flat part of the ramp and then partially on the 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 transition wing. I mean, how wide is that from? How wide is that? Uh, is that ten feet wide? Um, there's an eight foot. Uh, there's an eight-foot section of the actual ramp itself, and then two six-foot wings. Okay. So, so it gets it to uh, 20 feet so the total. the fire truck should be able to fit right in there. Right. We, we, we've tried to maintain 18 feet for the fire truck, minimum. Uh, on, on the lighting, it's. I'm, I'm still a little surprised that the lighting here is brighter than you have in other parts of the park, whereas with the poultry, uh, I 
the condominium units, they wanted the light to be less bright than normal. So isn't there going to be a contrast there? Uh, and I'm surprised that they, they were so adamant about having the light less than normal that why aren't they objecting to right next door having brighter lights? It, it, it's exactly the, the point that, that Merrick, or the, the question that Merrick raised. Um, I think the difference, just, just to get a sense of order of magnitude, the difference we're talking about is, is about a half a foot candle probably between, um, between say, Gateway Park versus here. So we're still, we're still under three um, foot candles on, on average. And, and, and photometrics is a funny thing as to, you know, you, you can, Get it, you can make the numbers um, almost what you want them. We, were, we took a very, very sort of conservative approach here, which I think elevates the foot candle average to almost, to, to almost three foot candles because we strictly looked at the light falling on the walkway, not one foot beyond the edge of the walkway. If you start to look, if you, if you expand the limits of what light is hitting the ground to just a little bit beyond the physical 10 foot wide paved walkways, I think that y y you're not that far off of two and a half foot candles, two to two and a half foot candles, which is what we, we might see in other parts. So it's not a dramatic difference, um, which is why the idea of just making this system dimmable um, really gives us the flexibility to address if, if, if Pulte feels, and, and that's where they're coming from. If it feels a little bit harsh when we have the ability to, to take it down, um, I think in, in all likelihood what will end up happening is we'll have a night lighting scheme where after some hour, say 10 or 11 p.m., um, the, the lights may be dimmed to 75% of, of their normal you know, light levels. Um, so do you have the ability to both dim individual lights permanently and, and then have them all go down to that same 75% at night? Not 100% certain on that one, Steve. I think with, with LEDs, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility, so I suspect that we may have that. Yep. Because, I mean, I can just see that in one section of the building, someone might complain, and yep. that light's too bright, and you've thrown it down. And, and so that might be 90%, and then that goes down to, at night, 75% of that. The other thing to keep in mind is they are full cutoff fixtures. They, they are... They are positioned and, and the optics are such that it's directed to the, to the walking pathways. And I think the mounting height was 14, 12 or, f 12 or 14 feet. So, so I think the, with, the, um, with the density of the, of the vegetation here um, and a relatively low mounting height, um, I think it does a lot to, to cut down on any, any potential glare that and even though they're they're round, though the the lights are directed towards the, the optics. Market. The optics are down, right? If you remember this. If you remember the fixture, um, it, it it's sort of a contemporary. Um, 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 a, I mean, I don't I don't want to say it's a contemporary acorn shape, but it, it sort of mimics that kind of an idea where um, it it bulbs out at the top, but the the actual um, luminaires are on the top fixture pointing down. Right, they point down, but they're, they're not point, they're spreading out. They're, right. They're all going in. They're going towards the walkway. Uh, so, so, the, so you left out here on the, as was mentioned, the, uh, the recycling and, and trash containers need a concrete base, and that was left out of the, of the Plan. It, so it, it was just a, it was just a, um, really an omission in the right. in the detail itself. There, there's a concrete pad under all right. under oh, all so the furnishings. Put that as a condition just to make sure we catch it. Right. Um, I would. When you get there, I had recommended that they incorporate the revisions in Beta's memo, and that that was in there. So, Steve, they'll. There'll be those kinds of revisions that we need to catch on the plans, physically relocating the crosswalk, um, changing on the landscape plan, changing out the cottonwood to the tulip tree. The, there, there are definitely plan revisions that have to um, follow 
with the comments. And there's just one little place I was concerned about, and it's it's where the the uh, the fire access drive coming off of the building there meets the right the yeah, go up a little higher. All right, so that point right there. If someone's coming heading south and they want to make a left turn, they're walking. Are uh, they tempted there to walk across the grass because of that point that, we, that it goes out? Yeah, you know, cut the corner and you know, what, what's being planted there to, to discourage them from doing that? It's, th there are no plants because if, if you if you notice, we have a, a more heavily green shaded area. That is the reinforced shoulder that accommodates the fire truck. So, so someone someone cutting that acute angle short is probably really walking across the nose of that. And I, I think that's. I mean, people I, tend to do that. They tend to walk in. They they, they absolutely tend to walk in straight lines. Not going to be growing very well right there if, if that happens. Um, uh, understood. Um, I don't know if it rises to the to the need for for making it more formal and, and really putting a lot more pavement. Well, there's about three, yeah, you can move or, or doing a separate round it off with more pavement. You can plant a little bushes there or or something to discourage people from doing that. When plant some roses with some thorns. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that in terms of the, I'd be reluctant to put shrubs because of the. Where we're trying to maintain that 18 feet wide. Yeah. So oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think what we, you know, we yeah. could make that radius a little bigger. You know, we, it, it is kind of tight. You know, we could make that that radius a little rounder. You know, to hopefully um, persuade people not to shortcut it. Okay. And then you know, typically on, on both sides of the uh, the walkway, you know, there's there's a four foot shoulder, and after that, we're typically going to uh, plants, you know, shrubs, right, and things like. That. You don't recall the radius off off top of your head. Yeah, I bet mean it's about five. Three, you know, right. three or so, five. Yeah. You know. I mean, if we went to eight, it would do be you, a couple. Do of eight. Should we should we take a look at at, at bumping up that radius yeah, a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You get a little tired of that light fixture, maybe that would. I was gonna say I, th I think the light fixture is mm -hmm. is intentionally set back a bit from it um, to 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 stay out of that 18 foot clear path for the fire truck. So so I don't think that we encroach. On the fixture, I think the fixture can stay. Uh, so I saw indicated in there that the the area to the west, which will not be for the time <coughs> being, now there's no planned development there, and you're actually going to loam and seed that. Loam and seed it, right? And have you presented the schedule for when will that be done? The loaming and seeding part. Yes. That that'll that'll be consistent with the completion of of the phase A part of the park. Okay, so and that, and that is in there, oh, should we put that as a condition? So, because, you know, the other concern is that we don't have vast areas of wasteland. Right. That, uh, I believe, periods of time. I believe it's a, it's a standing condition that's connected to, um, I think to the modified master plan maybe, or, um, but it's fine to be in there just as a reminder that we're obligated to keep all these areas now, stabilized. That, that section is it, pretty much. It, it had been loamed and seeded. Yeah. Right. It had been loamed and seeded, and now we've. There's been a lot of disturbance with um, some of the, you know, some of the early stages of the of the park construction um, had started, and then preparing the pulte area is underway. So, it's it's all become disturbed again. So it'll get loamed and seeded. Uh, just one more thing. On, on diagram L303, and I don't know how easily you can get that up there, but where the crosswalk comes across the street, there's some kind of light was indicated that looks like it's right in the middle of where the pedestrians have to cross. Excuse me, L103? L303. 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 Is 
it, I, it looks like it light. It has. It, it's not consistent with the other lights because the other lights have four spikes and this one has six. So I'm not sure what it is, but uh, but you look look down there. It's there's something there and <coughs> like it's right on the sidewalk. Right here. Right there. Yes. What is that? Is that all? Is that a light? Post or is that a traffic light post or? We 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 no, it's, no, it's not. It's a that was included in one of our comments was in the in the panel conflict there. So, so there might be there might be a feature there today that has to be addressed. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Yeah, we don't have we, we don't want that obstructing the pedestrian right. way there. Is it is it a is it a light? It looks like a light. Looks like a lost light. It was really, there really a light there, and if there is, it's on the other side. That's Brigham, right? That's Brigham right there. Yeah. Yeah. So the it's on the bridges side. It's on the it's on the bridges. No, it's no. This this is the seg. This is the segment that takes you to the hotel. So this is the restaurant parking. Yeah. Okay. So this is Bri Brigham Way, and straight into straight into Brigham's front door, and take a left to go right. to. No, we had pointed out one comment where the where the new walk is. Yes. Yep. Yep. At the southern at the southern end, right? This is the yep. I know. I know there's a light. I know there's a light up in that area. So we've just got to make be certain it's it not in the middle of the stock. Yep. Yeah. That would be. <laughs> I would not be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that would you be your going away gift, Steve? <laughs> no, I'm done. <laughs> Anybody else? I just have a question uh, on if we go back to the original drawing, the little jug handle on the right. Get the jug handle to the right. We get the plant things in the middle. No, to the all the way to the right of the drawing. Oh, okay. The jug handle. Yep. Yeah. What is the height of those plantings? Do we know? Well, there's. Couple things. They, they would be mounted up slightly. Uh, so, and we're going to isolate that back walkway. Right. Yeah, and we've tried to set them back because it, it's a good point. They are, um, those are flowering trees. Um, but see. we're anticipating that they'll get up big enough to kind of get out of the sidewalk area and all, not interfere with the benches there. And this is going to remain New England development property. You're going to main. You're going to maintain the security of this yes. park. Yes. Okay. You have the forethought of how much time it's going to take for the security of this place. Well, we have, we do have full-time security in the development right now. Mm -hmm. um, we have a fair number of security cameras throughout the development. And coverage here within the um, of the park will likely be incorporated either with cameras mounted on on the light poles, um, possibly some cooperation with the Brigham or the or the um, Pulte buildings because many of the systems that we use are wireless. So, you know, we simply need a place to mount. So those are the kind of options that that we'll look at and and. Yeah, and, and I think that the development does a very, very good job in, in maintaining the landscape areas uh, if, if you look at, you know, across the development wide. So here this is a, a little bit more intensive than um, what's in the development, and we certainly understand that it's a, it's a pretty special place within the development. It's going to require attention. But I think we've demonstrated that we've been maintaining the property um, at a pretty class A level. Okay, that's all I had. Could you talk a little bit about the uses of the plaza area? I'm just I'm wondering, I like the design, I like um, that, but I'm just wondering about uh, would it be, um, could, could there be community events in that space? Um, would it be okay for Girl Scouts to sell cookies? Um, could people have food carts? I mean, what sorts of uses and how would uh, that be? Like, would they, how would so that be? So I think we view it predominantly as a space that would be used by um, 
called the occupants of the village. So guests to the hotel, employees at Brigham, residents at Pulte, future, future employees of the commercial in front. That's where we see the, the most immediate um, use and we think it's a great asset for all of those different people that are there on a daily basis. It gets a little bit tricky when it's entirely opened up to the public, um, but I, I won't say that we, we would absolutely preclude it. Um, I, I don't know that the example of selling Girl Scout cookies, certainly you'd rather be on the plaza <laughs> between Target and, and Wegmans as, as an example. So this just may not be the, the right kind of location for that sort of thing. But I think the idea of um, working with the, you know, sort of the occupants down here for, for an event that let's say, um, so, you know, there's, there's some group in town that would like to host an event on that plaza that involves, um, you know, a, a catered event or something like that. Um, I don't think that we're not open to it, um, but the details of it can sometimes get a little bit cumbersome. Yeah. No, I was, I was it's private, meaning it's private property. People get concerned about liability and, and, and those sorts of things. So those kinds of pesky things tend to make um, those kinds of uses um, tricky, but I don't want to shut out that, that possibility. And the policy that's in place, um, for the plaza that's between Target and Wegmans that we worked through with the, with the planning staff and, and the board ultimately blessed, um, talks about the idea of um, different kinds of uses um, on the plaza space and what the expectations are, everything from, um, from security to signing and, and, and it's, you know, it's not supposed to be an advertising opportunity, it's supposed to be a community space opportunity. And, and so I think maybe something that's consistent with that policy yeah, I was I was thinking of things like um, you know having a lunchtime music thing, like maybe you have a few um, you know people uh, from the high school or something that want right. to have a, have a music concert uh, or play strings or something like that that would complement the businesses and the residential and everything. You know, have a lunch in the park kind of thing. So I, it sounds like you're open to. I think we're open to that. I mean, through the same process as the other plaza. The Halloween, um, I think we've been doing a Halloween event on the plaza next to Wegmans. I, I don't know if, Abby, if you recall or not, but if that's in cooperation with, with the school department or if it's in cooperation with, with any one of the groups, but, or if it's just something that the, that, you know, that the center um, hosts. Um, but that's a good example of, of that kind of a function. Any other question? Any other board questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I just said, um, what what type of shade structure options did you look at? They they weren't extensive. It was, it was um, the the early on concept was a was a, um, a, a a circular pavilion type structure, you know, sort of a traditional. You might see it in the town square, town green kind of a structure. It was. It, it was not envisioned to be um, something similar to the the one that's on the big plaza between Target and Wegmans. Yeah, because it, it yeah, I think like today is a perfect example of why a shaded structure would be needed. Um, I don't think it necessarily needs to go to the scope of that type of a large structure, but um, it's going to take a while for any of these trees to mature, um, especially considering that we have the the residences nearby, the assisted living. Uh, I see them using this space. I'm having visited um, some with the family where you'd want to take a walk out, but without any type of a shade, I think this isn't going to get the use that uh, that we wanted to get. And here we are on May 15th, and uh, so I would I would like to see some type of a non-tree shading structure it doesn't necessarily have to be in that center area where you were envisioning uh, events taking place where this might prohibit that um, like a larger structure and that's why I was wondering what types of structures you had looked at um, especially near where the benches are well 
Well, the, the, the thought was that the plaza, the, the plaza could accommodate seating. We, we see that they're probably pretty good um, lunchtime demand for folks working at Brigham um, or people that, that are, are living here that may want to, you know, just grab a cup of coffee and sit outside. So, so the idea of, of tables and chairs with umbrellas that allow some flexibility in that space um, is what we were envisioning would be, um, okay. you know, the kind of very direct shade. And, and that's something that, that I think we, we, we'd we prefer to take a look at as opposed to a structure itself. Got it, yeah, yeah. So, Abby, would that be part of the conditions of the approval, that there would be tables there for certain times of year um, so that it's... You could impose that condition because right now you don't... Are you planning to put them out or is it just if one of the nearby it, owners wanted them? It was to see if the demand was really there. You know, I think the, the idea is to see how the, the demands on the space evolve once Brigham occupies, once residents are, are living there. But this would also be used by the assisted living, wouldn't it all? It, Isn't this part it, of that? It's, it certainly could. It certainly could. The, I mean, the assisted living. Are they considered part of this village that you're talking about? Technically, no. Got it. So um, the, the maintenance responsibility, when I talk about the, the occupants of the village, the maintenance responsibility that is a shared cost is shared by the condos, Brigham, the hotel, the restaurants, and then what we show is the two future buildings there. Um, Bridges, Bridges has a pretty, I think it sounds like you've been there, so you know they have a pretty, a pretty nice courtyard that's on the backside. I honestly am not familiar with um, how many residents, residents get beyond yeah. the courtyard or they have a roof deck as well. Yeah, because even I, uh, at they my work, be. they, have, they do have more permanent types of tables with, um, with umbrellas that are, that are set up to, to weather um, all the different months of the year. Uh, I would definitely feel more comfortable approving this with some type of shade. Because let's face it, if you put this in today, you're not going to have shade for another couple years, these two-and-a-half-inch caliper trees. Um, and... I want it to be used. Could we craft a condition that says that we work at a staff level to, to be able to implement some shade uh, immediately? Um, you know, l l let's see. What about even the benches? Are, are there... Are there shade elements that you can add to these, uh, to benches? To, not to all of them. Right, right now, uh, we haven't proposed it. Because um, that would be another option if you didn't want to take up space in that uh, promenade area. I just know today you, you wouldn't be able to go out there today. 85 degree heat for a while. I think more functionally, tables and chairs with umbrellas would serve a better purpose than covering than covering the benches. You know what you think of as a covered bench is it's what's along um, the Charles and Memorial Drive, which are gorgeous. Yeah, you yeah. know they're gorgeous, but substantial structures. Um, you know, I'd, be, I'd totally be fine with that. It's just the condition that you mentioned seems a little bit too loose, too fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, would you be willing to agree to a, you know, I don't know, couple, couple umbrellas with uh, tables and chairs from the My start? My suggestion was is that start. what if we were to agree that we are going to provide tables and umbrellas and we work out what seems to be a, um, a reasonable density of them. So rather than say we need to buy two, three, yeah, yeah, 20. That's right. That works for me. That's all. I'm, that's my only question. All right, if there are any more comments from the board, I'll ask, ask if there are any comments from the public. <clears throat> Seeing none. <laughs> Abby, I'd like to add a condition. 
Okay. It's a two-part condition. One would be to run the plans before the Westwood Police Department, uh, Sergeant Sicard, maybe, right. and just to get an idea of anything that the Westwood Police would say, oh, no, we shouldn't do it like that. We shouldn't build it like that. Okay. Uh, I'm just worried about the security. This is a park. And in the business I'm in, I understand what, you know, an element can be brought to such places. Now, I can't sit here and tell you the percentage. It could be 0.1% or it could be, I, I don't know. I'm not speaking to that. I'm speaking to the security of the place. Uh, another part of the condition I would like for the security department of New England Development to coordinate with the Westwood Police Department about the security procedures, how, does, how we're going to secure this park going forward. So, may, you know, a condition that might that might address both those aspects is to is have a meeting with the police department to review. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To re, to review the plan and and our proposed security measures for it. Okay. That's fine by me. Well, nowadays the the way to provide security is to have some uh, cameras uh, on the area. So my question would be not that. You should go out and put them there, but uh, would the facilities be there to easily install them if needed? So I, I, w I was saying earlier that we have security cameras throughout the development, and we will absolutely be looking to locate cameras within the park. That okay. that's a that's an important part of our um, you know of our security plan that exists today, and then, and and we and we have um, people that that roam the property. You've seen our security vehicle and. Yeah, and I think, yeah, if you have security cameras there, that's more than enough. To okay, I think we have seem to have exhausted our commentary. Um, are there any further thoughts before I entertain a motion? I move that we accept the revised plans prepared by Shadley Associates from April 2nd, 2018. Uh, incorporate changes from tonight's meeting, to the conditions that have been discussed here, and include the um, responses to the conditions, uh, responses to the questions here from uh, Tetra Tech. So this is technically what, uh, have a, a modification to the um. EDR? No, it's not a modification. Um, there's a condition in your approval last year that final details be submitted to you for a final review. So this is that review. So we're accepting the final yeah, review. Yeah, accepting the plans. Okay. I'll second that motion. All right, I have a motion and a second. Um, do we feel like we're clear on the conditions? I heard that we would review the plan with the Westwood Police Department that we review a proposed table and umbrella layout of the plaza with staff, um, amend the radii at the intersection to the northwest of the western Pulte building. Were there any other ones? There was also to um, remove or relocate that light fixture um, mm -hmm. in the near the crosswalk to Brigham's, and I think to loam and see that um, was it. Phase B area? Yeah, I think so. It's five added. Okay. To All right. So the five additional um, conditions. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. So we have five ayes. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item is 60-90 Glacier Drive. It's a modify and EIDR special permit public hearing. This is a request from Prime Motor Group AMR Holdings to modify a parking plan approved in 2015 and modified in 2017 to reduce the number of vehicles stored on site. Is there anyone here for this application? 
fire away. Thanks, Paul. Just a few minutes. Just go for it. You do have a copy of the plan in front of you, the hard copy, too. Mm -hmm. David Macko with Kelly Engineering Group here on behalf of uh, Prime Motor Group and Caruth Capital. Um, here with me tonight is Joe Rose from Prime Motor Group, and I think it's um, Chuck McQuaid with Caruth Capital, the owner of the building. We are here to update um, the ongoing special permit and uh, in site plan e EIDR for exterior car storage on the site located at 60 to 90 Glacier Drive. We're here specifically for tenant um, changes within the building and to reduce the exterior car storage for Prime Motor Group due to a, uh, a change in the parking count at the site. The net reduction of parking for Prime Motor Group is uh, 62 stalls from 326 car storage stalls to 264 are storage stalls. Um, the applicant and the landlord has worked a lot of these things out with the zoning enforcement officer within the town prior to submitting the application. And um, it's important for Caruth to keep moving. They've got a new tenant to take the space and we'll um, be able to obtain a building permit once we get the permits from the uh, planning board and the zoning board. So um, original permit was issued in 2015 for the car storage stalls. We amended that again in 2017. And now we're back again um, for some tenant, t tenant consolidation and one new tenant. Prime Motor Group continues to lease a little bit more space within that building and there's also a new tenant that wants to move in. Sorry, so what are we doing? We're just reducing the number of cars that are sitting out there? The storage. We're, yeah. we're reducing the number of unregistered cars, brand new cars. Okay. Those are the green lines on the... Correct. Plan. Yep. So, so why is it the new tenant requires more parking spaces than the old? They don't require that much more. The building department took a crack at all the parking calculations, and they, they just updated them, and we're just going to com comply with those. The new tenant requires about 13 more stalls than the previous tenant. Prime Motor Group has taken over more square footage in the building, um, but their parking count did not go up. It stayed the same, and um, the zoning enforcement had a different take on the frugal fanny's use. That's, you know, in summary, that's the entire parking change. Right, I think it was the change of the use triggered more parking in that yes. space. Yes, that space requires 13 more stalls than the previous tenant. Well, I don't have any questions. <laughs> We've priced 13 more, so but you're reducing the number of storage spaces by. They don't. They don't necessarily need a special permit, but yeah. but but Prime Motor Group for their use, which which is be which is using the stalls above and beyond zoning required. That's the that's why we're here today. With the allocation for the exterior storage, there was no parking to give the new tenant. Got it. So essentially no more special permit is needed um, because as proposed, um, all tenants in the building prime is meeting the required um, parking spaces, so are the other tenants. So it's essentially the 264 excess spaces, the over and above, those are the ones that are for outdoor storage. So now it's really to modify the plan you previously approved um, a year, a little over a year ago. 
the update the plan of record. Yep. That's what we can call it. Okay. So the special permit that we issued before is just not needed anymore. Right. So it, it's, but the way it was written before was combined EIDR and special permit, um, and it referenced the plan. So this new approval before you is um, in EIDR to modify. We advertise it as a special permit in EIDR, but we revised the plan recently to make sure that they have met the Okay, so we're taking an EIDR and a special permit, just making it into an EIDR? Yes. So there's no change to the impermeable surface? Yeah. There's no proposed changes to the exterior of the building at all? Any other takers? No. <laughs> no. Uh, actually, I do have one question. We're not changing any of the exterior lighting? No. Okay. Right. Any questions from the public? Okay. Um, I see there are a series of um, waivers, I think, that actually, were needed those before. Just informational? That's, we don't have Is to that just informational? Those are just... What's the action that the board needs to take to? Um, Sounds like we need to I make a motion and then we need to close the hearing, I think, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. Yeah. Never mind. Um, right, so you would be considering the modified EIDR plan showing the 264 storage spaces. Okay, so actually, so, so just we'd have to modify the 2015 decision and the 2017 de decision. Yeah. Well, it looks like so condition a condition of the 2017 approval condition four requires them to return if other uses need the storage spaces for parking. So that's what they're here for. Right. Tonight. That's the trigger for. So we we review that, and I think we can just move to. Um, Uh, to we move to approve the um, modified parking plan um, subject to approval by the ZBA. Second. Okay. Um, right, we have a motion and a second. There's, uh, there's one condition here which may be able to just read. In the event that there are further tenant or occupancy changes or other uses changed within the building the property, Applicant shall apply to the planning board and reduce the number of storage spaces. And this is just what David essentially paraphrased. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a motion and a second. We're continuing, we're continuing the uh, condition basically. Yes. So we yes. There's a condition to come back and approve. We approve Nothing that, and we say if there's more changes, right. you got to come back. Again. Coming back. All right. We so, so we essentially the waivers we approved before are still in effect. Okay. Part of this in effect. Okay. All right, sounds like we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that's Thank you for all she wrote. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, next item is somewhere in here. This is the continued public hearing for zoning amendments submitted for annual town meeting to prepare the planning board to report to town meeting relative to articles 13 and 15. Right. Are there just two, are we? Two <laughs> articles. So you have article 13. Um, you should have received the town meeting warrant book or it's on its way if you haven't received it. Did it's, you get it yet? It's in the packet. Okay. Oh, the, oh, through the mail? Yeah, yeah it mail. should be mailed. Okay, so it's on its way to you. Um, we had it electronically, I think, last week or so. Um, so Article 13 is your article that you're sponsoring. That's the, um, the map amendment to include those two residential properties for the Islington Center um, proposal and the petition article. Um, you need to close your hearing and make a recommendation to town meeting. You voted before, that was your vote 
was to the Finance and Warrant Commission, but this one should be um, to town meeting. You'll give a written report and a verbal report. So uh, I've drafted a um, draft uh, written one for you to review tonight. Um, and then after you vote, I send that to the town moderator for town meeting, and then Trevor as a chair will um, give the verbal report at town meeting at the time of the articles. Okay. And we haven't already given our approval on this? I thought we voted at the you, last meeting. You did vote, but your vote was to recommend to the FinCon. Oh, I see. So you should make a new vote to recommend to town meeting. Okay. So I, I want to suggest, or at least discuss, the idea of, um, so with Article 15, with the petitioner article, it is verbatim what we proposed another a town meeting ago, except for the number, essentially. And what uh, petitioner did was, at the town meeting, attempted to offer an amendment to lower the um, limit on residential uh, units from 90 to 30, uh, but that was ruled out of order at the town meeting. So the current, so they came, so basically they replaced the number and here it is as a petition article, um, at which we don't support. But if it does come to a vote, I think that it would be worth considering that we offer an amendment to see if the town would agree to the 90 number that we had originally proposed um, because that was we got a majority there was a majority in favor of that it just wasn't two-thirds I don't think that the 30 well it'll this will happen after the Islington articles I don't think it's going to get two-thirds approval and I don't know that it would survive indefinite postponement but if it does go to a, a vote and a discussion it seems like there's an interest in setting some kind of a limit and shouldn't we consider offering um, an option there to say 30 is way too low we disagree with that but we would we did originally offer 90 and would people if we see if we get two-thirds for that so Abby what would be that mechanism for us to modify uh, to uh, to ask for a higher number you would have to make a floor amendment um, but, uh, and they, wrong, I think the moderate, didn't they do a floor amendment last time and it was ruled right, out, ruled of, out order. of order so it has to be so it sounds like it's a tricky thing to do well yeah. at the previous at the town meeting before this remember there were petitioner articles to um, change to remove residential uses from the um, FMUOD and yes. to make other changes and we just before town meeting we met and we decided to offer amendments and have these amendments ready to go in fact at the town meeting we got up to talk about those pension amendments and that was ruled out of order and so we then the thing was uh, it was brought up for discussion and we never really got the amendment. So what we need to know is the exact procedure that we're going to need to navigate these waters to make a legal amendment. So it would have to question. still be consistent with the public hearing notice. What the public hearing notice for the petition article was the exact article. With um, the way it was written, the petition article was ex exactly how it was in the advertisement um, so it said 30 well so. when it was when that was raised at town meeting I recall I believe that the moderator of town council had said something about uh, it was hadn't radically been, hadn't been discussed by the planning it. board and here we are we're discussing mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. at the yeah it was going from 90 to 30 and it's no different we're just we're going from yeah. 30 to 90 well, just, it, well, it is a big difference because Going from 90 to 30 changes the whole purpose of uh, of the article as originally we As would going it. from 30 to 90 change the entire aspect well, of Well, it, it, would, it would change the what the petitioner is attending to do. Right. But it would be restoring what we attempted to do last year. So does that make it out of order or not? I think it's the same. I think it's the same either way. Because what was the original one that they tried to change? 90 in the fall. Well, 90. that was after the first fall. The first being where they tried to ban, petitioner article to ban all housing in the FMUODs. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was defeated that outright. Was May, yeah. We came back the next year and yeah. off, oh, was it the next year or the next yeah, fall? November in the fall. We came yeah. back in the fall and offered 
90 for a cap, and they tried to modify it on the floor to 30. It was ruled out of order. It went forward at 90. So it, went, it reduced And we did not get the two-third vote. I think it was ruled out of order because it was a reduction. Versus, I'm wondering yeah. if this, this is well, an extension. Well, it's a reduction which is going to hurt our side. But I don't know then what when I mean it is becomes why, an increase, it's no, going to hurt this was, side. Why it was ruled out of order, that's what I'm trying to get to the, right. to the heart of. It was because they the number was reduced. We're asking for it to increase. So I'm, it, I thought it, it was, was to do with the notification. Right. It was... It wasn't the amendment. Um, you, you can make floor amendments. It was that the proposed amendment was radically different than the original public hearing notice. So someone may not, yeah, um, may have missed the public hearing or missed town meeting thinking that it was going um, so to be too drastically thinking? different. It's not as drastically different. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that we can make the motion and, and see what the, um, I mean, it's, you know, you can say, oh, well, that might get overruled, or you can make the motion and see what the opinion of the town council is. And sure. We can, we well, sure, we can make the amendment. Because I just don't know if it's going to fly. The reason it was so rat you know, we can, the moderator can rule on it, and, um, you know, if it's, if it's contentious enough, someone can challenge the ruling of the moderator and demand a, a, an overruling of the moderator. But and that's, I don't know if that's ever but that just goes to town council. Mm -hmm. Do we know the order of the where are the, where do these fall in, in relationship to the? Do we know the number? Islington, yep. Islington articles items. are 11, 12, and thirteen. So this would run up. And this so would come this up after. Is, then fourteen is the school, right? The schools, and then fifteen is the yeah. petition article. Because was the, was the fundamental issue um, was one of the fundamental issues with the ninety to th ninety to thirty or whatever it was in the fall that the number was simply so vastly different it was a fundamentally different. Yes. yes, right. And I think it came down to notice. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. The public, nobody right. was notified that notified this was going to be yeah. on right. the bell, on the on the floor for discussion. So they so, figured it was right. a violation of the open meeting law. Right. So I think if you wanted to make a floor amendment that had a better chance of surviving being ruled in order, I think it would probably need to be lower to still yes, be consistent. because it's just it's the same number. It's just going in the opposite yeah. direction. So I don't. I think it, I don't think it will survive. My personal opinion, unless we pick something lower in between somewhere, but that might defeat the purpose. And, and I think um, amendments are supposed to be submitted in writing in advance. I I can check on. They have to be see. submitted in writing. In writing. In writing I don't believe they have to be in advance. Um, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, okay. they can do it. Um, you just have to write it out okay. there and then. Yeah, because we've seen lots the, of scribbling. Yeah, uh, town council makes see. a ruling on it. Okay. Well, the um, the original. So the original argument for the 90 was, one of the arguments was that it was, it didn't violate any um, uh, the uniformity clause because it was actually not a true limit, but it was an advisory sort of, it was a number that could never be reached and so it wasn't actually affecting anyone's property rights. I mean, that was one of the arguments for why that was good. And the 30 is not good because it, it clearly would affect property rights. And so the amendment is an attempt to rehabilitate the motion with the, the petition article which would not survive the attorney generals we would think so I mean yes it's a radically different it changes the um, the petitioners article and may might not we might just want to let it go I just guess. let but it go I, and I, see what the yeah, attorney I, general says I don't think I yeah give, given that I don't think this uh, petition article uh, it's better that way. would survive the attorney general uh, I don't think it's it's uh, if it's, you know, I think it violates the uh, the Zoning Enabling Act, so uh, I don't think we should start tinkering with it before it's anyone has a chance to vote on it. I think we should just be presented for what it is and uh, um, and and say that this article is totally uh, out of line with what we originally tried to do last year and uh, doesn't meet that purpose at all, and in fact, uh, it violates the, the, the zoning enabling. Not to mention, it would do away with all the FMUODs from here on out, because we'd be maxed out in Islington throughout all the zones. Right. But the real concept here is that, and even somebody on FEMCOM had mentioned that you, the idea is that you, you set a cap, and then if, you, if the town wants to move forward with a project, 
then you put the cart in front of the horse. So it's a different way of approaching a project where you, you see what that development would be, and then you extend the cap beyond that. How does that benefit us as a town? And, and generally, it gives you, predi it gives you predictability. Way. Right now, there's we no We already have predictability. Yeah. We, there is we, no predictability. We, there's no cap. That? We are the gatekeepers. We decide how much housing will go in in any project. That's not predictable. Why, why not? Because it's not. You just said you decide. Yes. We well, are the gatekeepers. Well, this board. It's a I'm special saying, there's, there's two ways of looking at it, and I recognize both sides. That's the purpose of including this type of a cap is to do just that. But we're not, I don't think we're going to... Uh, I don't see why we'd want to box ourselves in in any way, shape, or form. No, the, the purpose of creating zoning bylaws is to create something that's going to last year after year, and uh, as opposed to having a project come along and then creating a zoning bylaws to match that project and doing that project after project. That's not the way it's supposed to be done, and, and that's what you're proposing here, to do that. Well, so but that's then, why then I disagree people, with that. Then you got Article 13. How is it different? How would it be different to come back at a future town meeting and say we need to raise the cap on residential units in order to allow for a proposed future development? How would that be any different from what well, you didn't anticipate doing, doing that? Uh, I'm sorry. What's the question? So, like, if um, let's say that Parent, there was a limit. In fact, let's say that there's a people say, hey, we passed Islington. Let's put the brakes on for a while and go ahead and pass this 30 limit. So then someone comes along and says I want to I want to put another 12 units down at the um, down in, in Islington uh, but I've got this cap so they might go through the whole process again and come there might be a whole other process that happens and then go to town meeting and say we need to raise the cap to allow this other proposed development right. Why, how that would be similar to what article 13 is doing where we are rezoning the parcels to fit the project so it's just right. it's sort of and that's entirely well, the wrong way to create zoning bylaws because uh, you, you, you're doing something where all right you can't do anything else except when something comes along and you want to do it then we'll modify everything to do that and and you and you're planning to do that in advance and that's just yeah, but not I the way you, you create zoning bylaws I disagree though because we are not s s uh, spot zoning we are merely expanding an existing zone by, uh, you know, by connecting parcels. I, I don't see any problem with that. We are merely expanding an existing zone. We're not walking into a neighborhood and said, this lot here, right here, is going to become commercial. For no other reason to benefit somebody. And there's a certain logic to this change, too. I mean, to, to capture the Taylor building, which is miss, which is, uh, aberrant zoning situation as it is um, right it's it's a hard it's a, it's a tougher comparison i think 13 to 15. right um yeah i mean i think i don't know i mean the whole the the notion of like, like if, we, if we were considering 15 without the lens of everything that's trying to happen in islington could be a much different discussion right because right. we're also looking at this in the context of you know kind of it's like a it's a reaction to certain situations and I, I sort of, I'm sort of with Steve where you don't, to put these bar, bar, these town meeting barricades which sort of require complete development of a project to the point of right able to shovel in the ground, I think is a developmental detriment I mean, or developmental hindrance. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, no, no developer is going to come along and do anything in the town. You're not going to get a if, good project if, out if of If they that. have to not only present their project and go through a review of the planning board, but they also have to go through a town meeting to get the bylaw to match because the bylaw has purposely and let, it all let me remind on the you the, 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 the recent applicant bought that land before these zones were changed just to let you know so like when you say nobody's going to buy a land and develop it we have islington is an example of that he bought the land before these zones were changed so right. okay. what you're now, saying yep, is but there's a difference between we're not going to solve anything tonight i think we yeah. should just move forward so we can but there is a difference there he came along with a project and the, and the project grew. Originally, it didn't include this. Then it expanded. But you're saying it's going to hinder development. He bought it to develop it without these changes in place. So he was willing to buy and develop. But he, when, he, when he went and bought the property, he didn't think he would need that extra land. Only as a project developed. It wasn't even zoned for apartments at that time. 
No, he when he when when, when he, he bought, bought the property, property it was he not had the zoned. FMEO, the in, in place. Well, but the residential use place. was added in 2014, I think. Right, in 2015, but the planning board had talked about it, um, adding it in the phased approach. So they, um, planning board brought forward the FMUD in the village centers first um, without the residential, I think in 2014. Then in a year later, in 2015, introduced the apartments, the multi yeah, So talking about mixed use. But I've been talking about it for a long time. But Steve, my point, 2012, my point is that you're saying people won't develop he bought it to develop it, and these zones didn't even exist at the time. And so, but I think, Dave, unless you have an example that you want to bring forward, I think we should just move forward. Yeah, I mean, that's my, so this sort of illustrates how it's too, com it's too complex. I think that uh, town meeting, it's going to be Islington, so maybe and then this comes up, and I mean, we're not going to be able to, I think, yeah, I, I now. It's a high, it's a high hurdle. Two well, thirds vote is a high hurdle. We, we have arguments back and forth about this. Imagine town meeting trying to absorb Absolutely. all of this. So right. I think we should keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, it's. I think as uh, and there might be, an, it just has to keep coming back or something. If there's a burning desire to set some kind of a limit, then maybe maybe next well, year. Well, this is like it for like two a, years now. Uh, we, if we we are giving a negative recommendation to this petition article, which means they can't bring it back for another two years. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any discussion? Is any further discussion on Article 13? I mean, we know we've already voted, but we could probably make a here look for a motion to close the hearing. Yeah, first we want to um, vote on that. Oh, we have to vote. vote Sorry. On first. Yeah, we, we want to. So I'll make a motion to recommend Article uh, 13 to town meeting. In favor of Article 13. Which one is 13? And it's that is <laughs> the zoning map. Zoning, zoning map okay. adjustment. Yeah. I second that motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve Article 13 to town meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Okay, we have a vote of four to one. So the motion moves. So I move that we uh, recommend the town meeting not approve Article 15. We have a motion to your second. What about the reasons? I'm thinking so when Trevor goes up to give his recommendation, I had prepared a little oh, something sure. based on what you had said previously to the FinCom. Right. I mean, we don't believe it's a valid uh, uh, zoning bylaw that, that it uh, violates the Zoning and Able Act and the Uniform Clause therein. Right. Okay, so yeah, I, I okay. think the statement is fine. I wouldn't say proprieties, I'd say properties, but oh. <laughs> it's good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think council should definitely look at the underutilized okay. proprieties. proprieties. And so uh, then maybe I would just add in the words um, at the end in Z Zoning Enabling Act. That's just a typo. Proprieties. That Steve had mentioned earlier. Oh. It's right on the other side. Yes. Flip it. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so we have three different things we, uh, right, so that's fine. So I, I, uh, so I move that we rec recommend the town meeting uh, does not, does not uh, pass article 15 for the reasons that it is, uh, too restrictive to encourage redevelopment of underutilized properties is in conflict with the state of purpose and goals of the FMUOD bylaw, and the proposal violates uniformity requirements. I will second that. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, all those who oppose the in favor of opposing. All those in favor of opposing <laughs> recommendation to town meeting of Article 15, vote aye. 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 All those opposed to opposing? Nay. <laughs> I have a vote of four to one. Thank you. Could I hear a motion to close our hearing on the zoning public zoning articles? So moved. 
second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. All right. Last, next, next item. Oh, yeah. All right, next item is um, parking design standards, rules and regulations, amendment, rules and regu regulations amendment public hearing, continued from 320 and 410, 2018. This is a public hearing to amend the planning board's rules and regs related to parking standards last adopted in 1992. Does anyone have any suggested edits? I'm sorry, I put this on hoping to get to it. I was I was thinking the way your parking standards are written now, this has to do with the size and angling of the spaces, um, the, where the curb stops are. I was thinking of uh, revising them to be a standard nine by 18. That's a standard size. Um, and That's then also, industry standard now? Yes. And then- That's what we have now except we have a lot of smaller spaces. Yeah. So the um, question I would have is, I does anyone ever put in smaller spaces? Yes. So I think you'd want to have language that still allows flexibility for you to, um, how not we, too often. You don't get them too often. You it? got it at, um, um, uh, yeah, behind Islington yeah, Center. The there's, a, there's some compact spaces there. Um, so I was going to ask you to continue this hearing one more time so I could draft specific language if you have any of the suggestions. But I think there should be language in there for at least you to consider some smaller um, compact spaces. Um, and then also encourage things like the um, electric charging stations, um, curb stops, or like the parking barriers in, in areas where there's pedestrians, but make it clear that there should still be nine um, nine by 18 feet of clearance in addition to those stops. Hmm. But if you have any other um, edits, if you want to review it a little bit more and send uh, them to me for your next meeting. You haven't given us the exact. No, I'm sorry. I was trying to. I didn't get to. Thank you. I didn't get to um, update the document in time. Okay. Do we have an actual public hearing going on on this? Yes, so this is an open public hearing. It's a, it's a hot topic for the public, given the attendance in the room. So, Is our, is our reconstitution of the board affected by that? No, um, unfortunately, Trevor and Steve won't be here after tonight. So, But it would be um, the three of you could still continue. So we um, need a unanimous vote of the three? Um, Um, check on yes. That. Yeah, I so. yeah, I think you three would need to approve. Otherwise, we would start again and just re-advertise. Um, doesn't doesn't sound like a crisis either way. <laughs> <laughs> so, could I get a motion to continue this? Should we continue this public hearing um, to to your next meeting, June twelfth, in this room at seven p.m. All right. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds like we all those opposed? Okay. So I heard four eyes, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's four to one, thank or four to the, five zero, thank you. Um, okay, I think the next item was just approval of minutes, maybe? Yes. Well, let's do approval of minutes before committee reports. Is maybe we can cut some cake as we do committee reports. Actually, I have one other item. I'm sorry. Can I is a little item for dis um, discussion? Absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Out of, you're out of order. <laughs> Hello, is this working? The citizens. Might. What if there's public comment? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, the police station, there is, um, they've given me some samples on the little plaza area, so they're getting ready to 
finalized the um, plaza area in between the new station and town hall. This is where we hope to have our farmer's market this season um, pretty That's soon. Right. Yes, gonna move it we're going to start. Uh, actually, we have a new intern starting June 4th. He's going to be working on the farmer's market. Um, the farmer's market starts in, I, th I think, uh, the second Tuesday in June. So June 12th, I think the day of your next meeting. Um, so it might first be located at um, where it has been behind the behind the church, but then later in June move um, down here to this plaza. Um, does anyone have a preference on the uh, which brick paper? What is it? White color. Um, yes, I can pass them around, or if you have any opinions. Well, I, I see um, a green one from here. <laughs> Be a mix. Not this is green. Westwood. Um, one color, yeah. <laughs> Keep it green. <laughs> and, um, what is the one to blend in with yeah. the... Yeah, what are these the building? Building? supposed to relate to exactly? Okay. And the one that's in the plastic was the one that um, oops, the, the project team, the architect, had uh, recommended. Which one was that? Um, this one. The white one? Yeah. The, yeah. the white erupted yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaning towards uh, this one, but actually, hold on. I have. The one that they fake play. Yes. All right. Who had said that? Rep the buses. Um, the project architect, or, yeah, project architecture, architect team. Yeah, I like the letter. Sorry, I'm so I have some <laughs> visuals showing. The area. It's all the time now. So the area well. of, <laughs> anyway, um, of the area that we're talking about here, these are the um, from the plans. Um, so what we Abby, have. Abby, Abby, Abby colored it red, which is biased toward Nora the red color. Oh, red. Nora is biased so to the red. In the plaza that we have out front is uh -huh. um, more the reddish. reddish color. So I was kind of leaning towards this. Are they going to be able to handle that? There's a lot of cars that come through there. Um, oh, you're not going to be parking. This is not in the area of cars right now. Okay. Where will the, forget, what um. focus on this? I like the, the color that they recommend, the lighter color. I have no idea. Yes, this okay. is the part of the town. Oh, I got it now. So, so we have one vote for this one. In the back of the police station. You have one vote for this um, one. In between so the these, uh, town hall. This is going to be... This area, so this is the police station. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me look at this. Yeah. Um, this is town hall building. This is the police station. This is the, the driveway from High Street, the parking lot, the parking lot. So cars aren't driving but here. No, but yeah, no this is where it's landscaping. Yep. Yeah. This is for pedestrians. Okay. Right, but I could, like, uh, so we have one, one likes this, and you like that one? Vote for one of those. Uh oh, yeah, there's so five here. Is everyone gonna vote for something different? I like the, <laughs> I like the green. So they they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna try to fit things around. I like these two. Yeah, we have. There you go. Gonna, where are they gonna put the stalls around the edges or in the middle and somebody walk around with it? Um. That's even bigger. Than it, but it's okay. They're gonna put the. Let me see what we're stalls in the middle and have people walk around. You go to the farmer's market? Or, or uh, I drove by there around once. The edge and, uh, yep, this is all around. I really like it. Edges. What are we doing now? Right. Designing the uh, way of the farmer's market? <laughs> yeah. That's sure, right. why not? Um, and then one other um, so verbal what request. Color, what color do you vote for here? Yeah. Can I? That's those, nobody likes these. These yet. have been so far dismissed. Mike's being difficult, so we picked I green. Am not being <laughs> I nearly went first, and you guys are just mad. Yeah, either of these two, but um, how are we doing? I, I might go with that one. Well, we have two votes for Back two votes for the reddish. For the reddish too. It's in the lead. Oh, we have three, so three reddish. Like the red. That's okay, it. Okay, so we won. Sort of for the white and one for the green. I did vote. Okay. I lost. Okay. So green. Right, so we'll go with the red. Do we, are we actually, do we actually have a say, or is Arkady just going to do what he wants anyway? <laughs> nope, they, a, they asked us. Nope, <laughs> no, we're going to tell them. Why don't they just so mix the different, use both of these. <laughs> no, every I don't other, think you have to unless you. How about they just mix then, these um, and put them, every other tile a different color? 
And then one other verbal request was um, there's a light. The approved plans showed a light on the north side of the high street entrance drive, um, but they think it's going to, in the tree that's there now is going to interfere with the light level. So they're asking if, if you'd be amenable to letting me approve administratively them switching the light from this side to this side so of the driveway the um, on well, the yeah, south yeah. side. So it doesn't um, have to stay on continuously for two So on the police. The entrance of High Street. Yeah, so they haven't given me the plan showing the exact location yet. So we're showing it on this side and they want to move it this side or? Opposite. It's oh. on the north side. Oh, on the north side? Yeah, oh, it'd be, it's better off on the south side anyway. Yeah. Right, but so they'd like to. These existing trees are on oh, both sides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to be closer to the sidewalk. Yeah. So we asked for a plan, but they didn't have it for tonight. But they want to get moving with this work before, kind of right away, because we want them to finish up. Um, so they don't want. If you if you could allow me to approve that administratively, if you give me the okay, then they can move forward before your next meeting in June. We'll give you the okay to put the light on any side you want. Okay. I like it. Okay. It's All right. Easy. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Wait, how is there how is there an existing tree there? There's no trees there now. According to this photograph I'm looking at there. Huh? Oh, that was before they cut it down. Yeah. Well, I'm looking before that, and it's not there. It's like, yes, yeah, this Google view here is somewhat recent before they tore the station down. Oh, maybe it is there. Sorry. Some of the uh, images are uh, from the yeah, winter. So they, removed, there. they already they removed, removed it. Okay. They removed it when they removed it. Out of construction. Yeah. Take the light wherever you like. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. We have okay. We have red tile. We have a light red that's tile. moved to the south. Okay. What, what shape are these tiles, by the way? Do we know? They're not this shape, I assume, right? Shape <laughs> <laughs> brick pavers, correct? <laughs> yeah. <I think> that. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's it for the police station. Okay, do we have any comments on meeting minutes? I noticed in one just a misspelling. I don't remember okay. exactly which one it was. But, uh, uh oh. <laughs> I actually have a list behind. Yeah. After I submitted okay. it. Oh, I see. So okay. It's just okay. uh, Joe Prevatera. Okay. So okay. So it's, it was um, like P R O instead of P R E, I think. How do they spell it? P R E. Hold on. I have to find it now. Oh, no. I spell it, I spell it wrong all the time. It was probably no, April 4th, probably minutes, no, April 4th. Yes, thank you. Um, that's a formal ceremony around. No, that's correct. That looks awesome. That's look awesome. Thank you for bringing that out. You're welcome. Oh, I see it. Yep. It's page three of um, April 4th minutes. Okay. So I move that we approve all of the minutes as corrected. Second. Thank you. I cough a vote, Trevor. Sorry? I'll just cough for a vote. You have a motion and a oh, second sorry. on the con for a vote. I was. Um, Focus on my back here. So. Okay. Thank you. All those Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Steve, I'd like you to have the, the sacred gold knife. Oh, thank uh -huh. you. Which goes with to commemorate your years of dedicated service. So, I want to thank everyone for uh, all the help they've had and everything. I, I know a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what am I going to do now? Well, I just will go for a long walk, walk in the uh, <laughs> woods, and maybe I'll bump into Hillary. Steve, you are the. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I always run for my seat, Steve. 
Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert here. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. But if you come to the meeting as a private citizen, we get to shut you down. <laughs> <laughs> What else do we have to deal with? A strict 30 second time limit will be enforced. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve, has there ever been discussion in a lot of the towns that, like, uh, all, you know, everything's a stop, a stop time? Like, a, a, a no. They do. No past. Oh, they do. Uh, like, a dead amount, they say, like, 11 o'clock. Yeah, certain boards do that. Uh, and it's really up to the chairman to enforce that. We never get anything done. That's true. We do our best work after 10 p.m. <laughs> Well, the goal should be to manage a meeting so that yeah, you can a, always get through everything, um, yeah. to get through yeah. everything in a reasonable amount of time and, and control the agendas, exactly. what's on the agendas. Let's see, do we want to talk about our the committee things oh, yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Oh, there was a trick meeting this morning. And because Mike wasn't there, we went and re-elected him <laughs> as co-vice chair. Nice. Which is the Three Rivers Three Rivers Interlocal Council. Interlocal Interlocal Council. Okay. So pretty. So it's the same slight. The, the same. I made a rookie president, mistake and didn't show up on voting day. The president and, and the two, uh, the, uh, the chair and the two co-chairs, oh, uh, co-vice chairs. Uh, will we, you know, they'll stay the same. Oh, and it, it was a very interesting meeting because they had someone from AARP there, uh, and they're talking about uh, making, what do they call it, age? Restricted uh, housing? Not age restricted. This is amazing. Hmm. Uh, you know, communities that awesome. that welcome all age people. A regular neighborhood? Yeah, yeah like a regular neighborhood. Regular neighborhood. <laughs> American neighborhood. But I mean, you know, have all the factors you want to have in, in a town so that in particular uh, elderly people can get along just as well as anyone else. So that has to do with with uh, naturally transportation is a big part of that, but all kinds of community services and uh, uh, housing and all the various things that you have that, that uh, would enable uh, people of all ages to, to live there. And so there's a program that they have going on to, uh, to uh, promote that. So I have some material, I'll, I'll get it to you. Should we uh, update everybody on our, our, our meeting with um, our housing subcommittee meeting? Mm. Um, so we met, we met to discuss the affordable housing um, options with, uh, but I, has there been anything else on that since we met? No, they're still looking to see if there's any properties in town that they could buy to um, make affordable. Is this Harlequin Estates or whatever? Is it something else? Uh, 215, uh, yeah, 215 High Street. <coughs> or Harlequin, I mean, whatever they call them, says farm. So I don't know how much, well, basically they, they wanted, um, they have a, some different options. It's very difficult to, um, I guess, to find a property to convert. And... So, it, for a developer perspective, it would be great if um, there was just some number, you know, like if we just, and we were like, well, we, in our opinion, or our position was just, we don't build houses, you know, we're just, so we really need the units. And, um, well, that's, that is, that seems to be the challenge to find, uh, either to find an existing unit or units, you know, a duplex or something in town and then put that together to satisfy the requirements. But uh, we saw a good um, alternative, sort of what's happening, was it Medfield that Jill Honderdahl exactly. sent out? It, that's brilliant, that's how you're supposed to do it. And the, the 
perfect model. Development there, they had built a, um, a, a uh, some affordable units in with everything else. Um, Twenty five percent, they count the rest. So I guess I don't know. They in this particular situation, I guess we have to wait. Well, and see they'll be they losing do. so much money in this situation because for it to be affordable, it has to be under two hundred thousand dollars, and are their they units are a million too. They'll be losing a million dollars per structure. It's just not feasible. They wouldn't do it if they were going to lose money. Well, th that's my point, though. So they it's, are making it's money. Not, but it's not feasible. But they make, the, they make their profits off of the other 75% in the building. Right, but if you have to take away three units and take a million no, 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 two. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about the example in Medfield. Oh, the example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking about what would happen at Hollow Point Farms. Yeah, it just wouldn't be feasible. Could you explain the, what they did in Medfield a little more? So they had, um, let's see, there was a, an email that went out with that. We could share that with everybody. But it was a uh, you know building that had like four or six units, I think, affordable. And um, then there were other non-affordable units like that in the. Were these condominiums? They were condos, yeah. OK. So not a detached, not detached. Right. And what was the price point of the market value condominiums? Not one point two million but the point being is that <laughs> Westwood's going to have to take a, a more active approach to this uh, because as as more lots are built on, uh, the affordable number will go down. And Medfield was is finding a way to deal with this, and I think that we should really push for this within Westwood where we can where 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 are the buildable plots of land where we feel that a, uh, a condo complex or an apartment building could go in and then you partner with a builder, which is what they did in Medfield, and it gets, and they take control over this situation, this 10% mark for affordable. I think it was, uh, we have to start taking active approaches to it. It can't be passive. Well. The planning board hasn't been. That's why you recently required the 15% for all starting yeah. at eight units or more. But I don't think that that can and keep up with the growth anyway. I think, I think it's there's not enough that's happening. Like to make like so, 15% sounds great, but each time it comes around, it's yeah. Um, but there's no more streets going in with you know 70 units. You know. Well, I mean, uh, up on 109, those uh, any of those spots where we can try to. I think we are going to run into this, and even and even the the increase in the um, uh, what is it called the accessory apartments, those are counted towards the end, aren't they? I don't, I don't think believe so. Not no. yet, because they're not, they're not no. subject to those yeah. requirements. I mean, that's another idea is that you could. I think I'd said something like if you wanted to, you could give people a, an incentive somehow to make have an accessory apartment that is affordable, but no one. Most of the people who want those aren't doing it for that purpose. They want to have an yeah. in-law apartment or something. Right, but if there's a way we could do both, they could use it for an in-law and have it considered affordable, that would be a big boon to us. I think, I think we should do more of what, what Medfield did, where you, you found a parcel of land, you work with a developer to, to create a condo or an apartment, uh, preferably an area that, that the residents are, are happy with the location. Uh, so <laughs> was, the town was one of the proponents of the project. Yes, well, yeah, because they had they had to deal with that uh, with that 40B coming in, mm -hmm. so that was part of their their way to solve their issue mm -hmm. and get over that 10%. Well, that's probably what it would take here to actually get someone to move on it. Would be the threat. But I'd rather be more active. I mean, we're yeah, we're well, close enough. Ironically. <laughs> <coughs> Well, a few years ago, was it three years ago or two and a half, um, the planning board looked at the Foster Brook site on Everett Street being a possible location for um, housing and amended the zoning bylaw to allow the um, age restricted. So it's only 100% age restricted there. So I think when you talked about this, you brought that forward because we thought that would be a good location. There, there would be then be an affordability requirement for that, but because it was 
it's still commercial land. You didn't want to give it up for for straight all housing, only if it's age restricted. It, it has to be half, 50% of the project. This is the old Houghton Pro property on ever? Um, no, no. The, the foster brick, it's like the near contractor. The, near the railroad bridge. Yeah. It's like the tumble yeah. bus. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's where the tumble, the tumble, where the tumble bus, bus, bus is parked. Yeah, whenever yes, it's yes. late hours, I get the tumble bus. Okay. Um, yeah, that lot's prime for something. I yeah. tumble bus storage. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the thing is it's got it. How can you be proactive? Like I mean, what we've done is change the zoning a little bit and see what happens. But it's, it really needs more of a, um, you know, more of a leadership and more. I mean, it has to be a combination of planning board, selectmen. Yes. You know, it's because we don't have any. Do we have property that we could do something with this? Would we want to? <coughs> it's going to need a bigger um, thing than just saying, okay, we'll adjust the zoning. We, do that? we we didn't. Yeah, you know, we we just did that in Islington. We we put out Sorry. a request for proposals. Uh, we offered town property. No, and, this is different and, though. And, and this is this is different. Why is it different? The the reason why it's different is that this is a very specific project where the RFP would be. To look for a developer to to work within a particular area where the intent would be to create an apartment building or condo specifically so that we can uh, deal with our affordable housing gap. That's the difference. Yeah, but but the Islington proposed the Islington process always was a mixed use, so it always included housing. And so because yeah, but I mean, it did, it always included But I'm talking about something that would get us over the hurdle. Housing. So like it would be it would be more apartments. It would yeah. be more condos where that's Islington's a band aid. Oh no, well, it's it's not. Not. we it's get not. the we get all of uh, Washington Street counted towards our inventory. You get you get it's a big boom. The band us. you get eight additional. Ten. 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 No, but you, it's the requirement plus it's the extra. It's affordable plus the 10. It's 12 apartments. So we but they need. All, we, get, we get 10 additional counted towards our inventory. It is a huge boon to the town of Westwood. But, it, but it's, not, it's not solving the issue. It's not hurting the issue. It's, well, it's going a long way towards solving the issue. No, I know, but I'm saying I'm saying for the for the next project that I think we should work with the selectmen on. And and we also did that with the Highland Glen project uh, when we put the extension on Highland Glen. The town was proactive there in, in doing that. So we've done this before. Didn't we lose uh, those? Yeah, so we and need. And if we can locate an area, uh, we can do it again. But even with Highland Glen, we did that where there's already uh, a senior development right there. We ran into problems with uh, some of the neighbors. So it's always it's always uh, uh, finding the, the best location or an acceptable location for this, which is the big thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, not to I'm not trying to dig, you know divert the subject, but I mean, if 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 nothing comes out of town meeting this year, it seems like we're getting a lot more people than we usually do. And if nothing comes out of other than driving the message home to a larger group that we have to proactively deal with this issue. Um, that would be a, you know that would be a step in the right direction because I mean all we heard day in day out for two years was nobody wants housing nobody wants this in my backyard nobody wants this nobody wants that so you know it's an issue which uh, I told you with Brian like it should be to frame it and put, put, to put it in a framework that is specifically about that so yeah to, to deal with that yeah Medfield got lucky well, they they snuck it yeah they managed to pull it off right Medfield's got Seems huge amounts of land up there mm -hmm. you know True. we don't have that luxury that's why our property values are so much higher <laughs> <laughs> but. all right um, what else gay street sidewalk meeting right Wednesday June 6 yeah there's gonna Is there be anything coming up in the town meeting about these in the next phase of the uh, not yet um, so in the fall was the approval for the design yep. um, work. So the design work is ongoing right now. So on June 6 is going to be a public meeting on those 30% design plans. So that will be presented then at the library if you're interested. So maybe we'll have something ready for uh, November's town meeting? Possibly. Um, crosswalk improvements. Yes. And then... Um, Public Works has also hired um, Beta Group to do an evaluation, a complete evaluation of all of our crosswalks. Um, 
intersections in town, looking at safety, accessibility, uh, visibility. Awesome. No further than Pine Street and Gay Street. So they're just getting started on that now. I don't know when it'll be completed, but probably later this year. So this is an initiative that was pushed by the uh, Pedestrian and Bicycle Safety Committee, and they've had a big part in that. So, uh, so it's something yeah, we definitely need to get done. And because uh, all right, it was a recent meeting of the Disability Commission, and uh, you know this town. Supposedly, like all towns, have to have a, a uh, an ADA compliance plan on how they're going to make sure that that your town is ADA compliant. Uh, I think it, they said at one time they had one, but they can't quite locate it. They, <laughs> I think when they moved, they they lost it. So uh, uh, maybe it's time for them to come up with a new one. Uh, but this would be a major part of that, which is all the crosswalks, you know, which ones are ADA compliant, which ones are not, plus the other safety factors involved. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. I think they're going to be looking at all those. <coughs> uh, anything else? I just, I just have one more question. So what's the... Um, is there an approach? What, what, what's the approach on that town meeting look like from the selectmen and from us slash Nora slash whoever? Is there going to be kind of a well, presentation saw, or a discussion? Or Nora's presentation that she gave yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah. So that should go a long way to uh, right. making our case. Yeah. All right. Is she planning on repeating that at a town meeting in some form? or? Yes, in some form. I think a modified, shortened version. Oh, I think it would define just the length she okay. has. But it, it shot in a, a little bit and make it just the problem is there's a lot of people fine. from the other sides the other parts of town that are directly affected by this and they need to be mm -hmm. educated yes yep Wednesday May 30th 7 p.m. bring a friend bring a friend, bring a friend family preferably a all, the, <laughs> <laughs> all registered all registered voters preferably a registered voter Wait, oh. Steve, were you going to update us on zoning reform last? Oh, you were gonna that's give right, you zoning reform. Uh, I was in a meeting at the State House where the a MAPC and the uh, Smart Growth Alliance were making a final push to uh, get the zoning reform bill, or actually there are several of them out there, uh, but to get zoning a out of those bills to get a, a bill for zoning reform, or maybe more, through the uh, legislature to get it out of committee. Uh, last year it did make it to the Senate. Uh, this year they're trying to you know, get it to the House. And, uh, and of course the governor has uh, his own version of, of various aspects of, of uh, zoning reform. Uh, so the push is on. So uh, a letter was being sent to all the state reps asking them to sign on. Call your state rep and tell them uh, you you want zoning reform this year. What does zoning reform? Yeah, what does it mean? <laughs> for us, it means a lot of things. But it, for instance, just the other meeting we had, uh, somebody come in for an A and R, and members were concerned that uh, you know neighbors aren't notified that uh, there's very limit little we can do for an A and R. We're the only state. Uh, in the country that has that kind of thing, and that would be replaced by a uh, minor subdivision uh, pro kind of process, uh, where we could tailor that to the to the scope of, of what's being asked. But it would be a much more uh, the, the planning board would have much more power and control over uh, what's happening, and the residents would can't be better informed. Can't we just authorize? Uh a butter uh, notification on ANS? No, because there's not enough time. 
Yeah. Well, when you the timing. Yeah, yeah, you have to act within 21 days, and they tend to submit them only a couple of days before the meeting. <laughs> so you have to. Just it depends when they, when they submit it and when we had our meeting. Yeah. So generally, we only have one meeting in which to act upon it. Right. Is that is there any like uh, zoning freeze reform as a part of that, or is it just the in our process? Like, well, no. I mean, there are a lot of things in the zoning which are done through court decisions over the years. For instance, the whole EIDR process uh, that's not in the zoning. Uh, Enabling act. act. That's something that came about. That the court said, "Yes, you can do that," and so everyone's been doing that. But uh, these, so these things aren't spelled out the way they should be. I was just wondering if it was, if there was any attempt to change the rules about, like the a zoning freeze, because um, I saw an interesting right. thing in yeah. Norwood. Um, Norwood town meeting was um, there was, a, I think, a resident uh, petition article to try to change the zoning because they didn't want a commercial development to happen. Yeah. And so, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, to those of us who've seen this before, um, they just filed for an A and R, uh, and you know. So they wouldn't be able to do zoning. that. Yeah, they, 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 that's definitely taken up in the zoning reform, and the details of how it's taken up is would be which bill they go for and which where it is at this. Uh, About accessory time. apartments. The, so what passed the Senate the last time was a. Uh, a bill very almost exactly what we have for our accessory bylaw uh, except it would be as of right and uh, of course there'd be no cap on it uh, but the dimensions uh, on it were exactly what we have uh, so what we would have to do is we would still want uh, an environmental review of it so instead of a special permit we could have the ZBA do an environmental review of, of it and uh, It'll be a lot easier for anyone trying to get an accessory apartment, but we'd still have the same control, and they would still look the same as they are now. And so, uh, given that that went past the Senate last year, it probably will uh, end up being that that way again. But you know, once these things get going through the legislature, the Things can change. They're not cheap. All right. All right. No meeting on the 29th. Everyone's okay if I cancel that? The meeting originally scheduled? Very good. Okay. So, town meeting's the next night. All right, sounds like we're wrapping up. So we have do I a motion to close the meeting. I second that. I make a motion to close the meeting. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.